Was a raw lifeless, the armor's worn on The shadow of a shadow is the ghost of a bomb Skyscraper standing in a desert alone A helicopter searchlight is searching for no one We're all pushing up a tin can Mountaintop of smokestack clouds The glory attached We're all pushing up a tin can Mountaintop of smokestack clouds The glory attached To the turn, we're all pushing up the tin can, mountain top of smokestack clouds, glory attached. We're all pushing up the tin can, mountain top of smokestack clouds, glory attached. Lost 
to the desert <laughs> The cell phone's dead, you're lost in the desert One by one, I knock you out The cell phone's dead, hover defective One by one, I knock you out Die of the sun, eye of the sun Die of the sun, eye of the sun And the 
listen to the wind on the telephone Somebody needs you, somebody is all It's Morning Becomes Eclectic at 89.9 KCRW. Beck joined us a couple of weeks ago in the studio. We just heard the first set, another uh, set of music coming up in just a while. But uh, our conversation with Beck first up, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Good to see you again. Always is, is good to have you on the show. We've done this so many times at this point. But it's a little bit different this time because mm. we're actually in, an, in another studio. We're over at the village. Right, yeah. And, and I haven't crawled out of bed about... Five minutes ago, <laughs> right? It's a, it's it's late in the afternoon, and uh, we we can give you that at this point. But you also right. wanted to do something a little bit different for us this time around as well. Yeah, we've been doing this thing, um, kind of just just um, getting a bunch of random instruments, uh, you know, uh, getting rid of our whole stage setup, and uh, just trying to see what we can do with all the songs, with um, you know, Casios and and uh, cans and cutlery. <laughs> <laughs> See, seeing how the, the songs change depending on what's, yeah. what's around to play them on. Yeah, it's just kind of a, it's it's a nice change for us, I think, to to just kind of pull, pull the plug, literally. You know, one of the things that we've talked about um, over, over the years is the fact that you are a, a prolific songwriter and recorder. You record a lot of stuff, don't you? Well, yeah, I guess, I guess, I mean, I go for long periods, you know, I'll go for a year, sometimes two years without really doing any, doing any records or working on anything, but, but then when you keeping get going, busy. the last four years have definitely been uh, keeping busy. So, so tell us about this record. Is, is this record a, a, a combination of some of the material you've been working on over the last four years? Where'd you do it? Who, who'd you work on with, on it with again? Well, I this think was Nigel all Godrich done with and, Nigel Godrich. Yeah. Um, who I've done two two albums previously with, and um, this was something we conceived together, and uh, we've been working on it for about three years. Uh, we've been having uh, biannual meetings, and uh, you know, kind of working on the songs, and and uh, we finally finished it at the beginning of this year. You guys, obviously, after working on two previous albums, and, and now obviously a third, and as you said, over an extended period of time. Mm. Uh, I, I'm guessing that there's a relationship there that goes beyond just an artist and a producer. There's a, a, more of a collaboration happening. At this yeah, point. and at this point, you know, we just we know each other so well. It's kind of it's a bit, little bit family at this point. So, um, um, you know, it's an excuse. It, it's kind of an excuse for us to hang out together and to get him out of London for uh, for the winter. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> when you when you say you conceived of it together, what, what's what was the conception? Well, the other records we'd done together were were pretty. Uh, we they were done very quick, and uh, they we were we were limited by what we were going to do. You know, I came in with all the songs, and uh, we recorded most everything live. And um, you know, usually we with mutations we had two weeks, and I think we had about three and a half weeks to do sea change so we always wanted to do something where we could really take our time and experiment and try to do all the things we never had time to do and uh so we certainly took our time <laughs> so so what was some of those things that you did that you hadn't done before uh i mean pretty much everything on this record uh there was a song that we we put on mutations as a bonus song it was called uh diamond bollocks which was a sort of combination of diamond geezer and top bollocks. Great word. Which were our favorite phrases at the time. Right. And it was it was kind of an experiment. It wasn't something that I'd written for the record. We, we were in the studio late one night, and we decided to kind of, um, you know, 
take a, a detour uh, and we we recorded five or six songs and then we chopped it you know Nigel edited the tape all together kind of um, you know 60s style and and uh, we sort of made this you didn't throw pieces on the floor and sort of pick them up and tape them together and see what uh, it sounded like, did you? Like no, <laughs> no. I mean, he's a little bit more organized than that. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it was kind of, kind of chaotic and and, uh, and it was very different from the rest of that record. And I think... So was that the jumping off point for this? Yeah, I think so. It was like we, we, I think we always felt like we wanted to continue whatever that was. And so C- it was change- much more experimental and, and noisy and all, kind of all over the place. And Sea Change, obviously, which was the second record you did together, was much more mm. stripped down. Yeah. It was much more of a sort of confessional songwriter's record. So is that yeah. fair to say? Yeah. And I think it was it was kind of, I mean, there are edges around it that, are, that were modern, but it, for the most part, it was recorded um, exactly how you would have made a record in 72 or something, you know. So there wasn't a lot about what we were doing on the record that was modern necessarily. So this is, this is kind of much more of a modern kind of, um, take on, on, uh, what we do together. Is mutations, mutations about eight years old now? Something uh, like was that. it 98? Yeah. Okay. So eight years, it took you a while to sort of then jump back to that point, obviously that you'd sort of played around with together before. Right. Yeah. It well, was, was it always something you wanted to come back to and, and experiment absolutely. with and see where it went? Yeah. I mean, we probably would have done it after mutations cause we were so excited about it, but he went off and did, um, a year, year and a half, I think with Radiohead, you know, that's when they did kid a and am- amnesiac, mm-hmm. I think. Um, so he was kind of gone for a couple of years and uh, when the dust had all settled, you know, it was about 2002, and that's when we we did a sea change. And then you knew that the next record with him was going to be this one. Yeah, definitely. You know, was, we'd, we'd always talked about it, and we're always talking about, wouldn't it be great to try this and that? We have a whole list, you know. Um, but um, I think we got to do a lot of it on this record. When you when you look at this record now as a finished record and you look at the, the collection of songs, um, you talked about uh, trying to conceive something. Mm. C- can you describe it as you look at it as a finished piece? I mean, obviously, it's, yeah. it's, it's your songs and it's, it's a piece of work, but you set out to do something. What, what do you think that is as you look at the record finished? Yeah, I think, well, it definitely evolved into something with, with bits of what we set out to do, um, but it definitely turned into something uh a little bit different took as, detours as, along the uh, yeah along the I way mean, that always happens but that's the great thing about the the recording process isn't it it's, if you're open to sure experimentation yeah. all of a sudden something happens you never would have thought about sure yeah I mean, you have to i mean this record was really about keeping uh keeping kind of an open mind and an open door and whoever walked in literally would end up on the record and that's kind of that was the uh that was the the feeling of making it. It was really uh, kind of there was a definite structure to it. You know, there were certain kind of a certain groundwork laid, but everything else was very much just capturing um, kind of what was happening around us. The packaging of this record is also something that's that's intriguing to me, and the videos as well. Can you talk mm-hmm. a little bit about? Well, let's talk about the the packaging first of all. Right. Um, the idea was to leave all the packaging uh, blank and then put all the artwork or imagery on stickers. So um, there's a big sheet of stickers that comes with the record, and you essentially have to uh, lay out or design your own artwork. And the the record basically, when when you look at this, the sleeve is basically like a, a piece of graph paper, I think they call it. I see yeah. it from when I was at school. Um, and, and then you have the option to, as you say, decorate it however you want. Sure, yeah. And uh, I think the idea, too, is is that you don't even have to really use the stickers. I mean, some people are going to leave it blank. Some people are going to put one sticker. Right. S- some people are going to cut out their own photographs and make their own collage. What made you, you know? think about that? Um, you know, when we went in, I when I had a, the meeting with Big Active, who were the design company that, that I worked with, and I've been following them for years, actually. 
Um, they're out of London and they flew in at the beginning of this year. We had this meeting. Um, they started talking about stickers and I was talking about stickers cause my son had just discovered stickers ah, and I see. had stickers all over my pants. <laughs> <laughs> I had uh well the stickers from my album by the way are now all over my kids pants. Okay. So something's as going they, on. As they should be. Yeah. So So uh, you guys are both talking about stickers. Yeah. And uh well I mean that's the beauty of the stickers too is they they the artwork for the record isn't sitting on your shelf, you know, it's not sort of lodged in a drawer somewhere. It's uh it's walked out of the packaging and it's all over your house and it's all over your life and <laughs> You know, I think there's something... Uh, there's a sinister plan behind this, actually. Yes. Yeah. Um, Sticker everything. To, yeah, get art out into <laughs> <laughs> out into the world. So, um, but yeah, it was, uh, it, was, it was a funny conversation because this idea of stickers came up and it was just a leapfrog. We just kind of went back and forth. What if, it's, what if the, the record's blank and then you got to put the stickers on? What if it's graph paper and, and the whole thing... Literally, I th I think took about seven or eight minutes, and um, and then it took another nine months to uh, make it uh, actually happen in the <laughs> and figure out the, the images world. I guess that you wanted to use. Yeah, well, then the idea became um, it should be sort of this random assortment, you know. Um, so we had to, um, you know, find. 15, 20 artists and photographers and illustrators and graphic designers and to contribute uh, various images. And so we had to sort through them. And, and uh, there were long transcontinental telephone calls um, going over various layouts and, you know, trying to figure out how to make it work. And a lot of it was very abstract. You know, I mean, I just, we just, you know, a week or two, got the actual stickers and got to stick them together and see if it actually worked. Right. So it's it's been a big experiment. What about uh, what about the DVD and what about the videos as well? Because that also is an ongoing crea yeah. creative experiment. I think a lot of this stuff. I mean, I I definitely know on other albums there were there were always these kind of ambitious ideas to do this or that with the package, and um, usually there's not enough time. And I think we had the. Uh, the luxury that we'd started the record so long ago that these ideas have been developing for so long and that, that we did have time to do them. But essentially the videos were, um, came out of a conversation Nigel and I had one night about how when he was growing up in England, the BBC had donated a bunch of old TV equipment to a school. So one of his classes was creating these little fake TV programs. Mm. And um, that just really... Um, started you know struck my um imagination and we we started talking about what if we did something like that and it was sort of a joke and then at the end of the recording we decided to um try it we went on ebay bought this cheap you know 90 dollar 100 dollar mixer from the 80s video a little mixer. video mixer right and um borrowed three video cameras and just set them up in the in the live room a room kind of like this a little bit bigger and uh and uh, we <laughs> we borrowed a, a big piece of green paper from my mother-in-law, and Nigel figured out uh, how to do a green screen. Mm -hmm. He is he, he's a, he's a technical genius, you know, just as far as um, you know electronics and and all that. He can figure out anything. But then with the green screen, of course, you can do not unlike what you can do with the the album cover, which is to paste your own images in sure yeah so we went through you know all our iPhotos and stuck a bunch of photos in there and and uh went up to hollywood boulevard and bought a bunch of wigs and went to the thrift <laughs> store and, you know bought bought some clothes and invited a bunch of people down and it would just let the cameras roll and um the idea and then nigel was at the video mixer of course and and uh we tried to capture as much of it live as we could so so I think about a third of the videos are completely just one take and he would just switch between cameras so there wasn't any real editing you know we we, we hear a lot about multimedia and obviously with um, with the changes that are happening with the technological revolution and mm -hmm. the way people can now hear music the way they can 
uh, see images. You know, YouTube, obviously, I guess, is the thing now where people can just go, you know, find yeah. the, the weirdest stuff. Uh, or, and you can post your weirdest stuff as well if you want to. Right, yeah. When, when you look at the, the combination of, of what this is, you know, I, I hold in my hand a piece of plastic, essentially. Right. But, but within that piece of plastic, there are the opportunities for me, first of all, as somebody who wants to express my own creativity to, mm -hmm. number one, decorate my, my album cover how I feel would be appropriate for me. Yeah. Number two, to look at you know a DVD of um, of the videos that you guys made in much the same way. And then, of course, right. there is the music. Sure. I mean, how does this package then all sort of complement uh, one another? How do the various aspects um, of this package sort of come together? And what, what, does, um, what does that say about the, the music that's on the record? I think um, it, it kind of represents the... the the uh the method and the spirit that the the music was made you know that there was a kind of uh um communal feeling to it you know there was a lot just so many people coming and going and it was very uh you know it wasn't like a record like um Odelay where you know i was in someone's house you know playing all the instruments and kind of it was kind of like a a lone a lone gunman kind of it sounds, scenario. It sounds like a great is, hang, to be honest with you. Yeah, it was it was kind of great, and it was it was really about putting random elements and people together, and just sort of frame, giving everyone a framework, and just seeing what happens, and kind of letting letting it be kind of spontaneous and a bit reckless. And uh, you know, the videos are, are you know the, they're kind of I guess you would say kind of lo-fi, homemade, and um, that was really out of a desire to kind of let the threads show a little bit and you know not everything has to look like a coke commercial and and you know and uh so that was kind of the feeling of the record and and i think there was a sense of fluidity and and possibility you know we were uh messing a lot with uh you know how we work together you know I mean, just the fact that we were doing these hip hop tracks and, but, but I was doing, um, these hip hop tracks and, in a totally different kind of, um, context and with a different sound than I'd ever had. And I was, I think one of the things we we're really trying to do with this record was bridge some of that, um, atmosphere and, um, introspection maybe from uh, a record like Sea Change into, this completely um, opposite side of my music, you know, the sort of um, more extrovert and, um, you know, beat, beat, uh, breakbeat based kind of music and, and kind of put them all together. So, you know, the stickers have stuff, images that are kind of childlike, and then at the same time, they have stuff that's, um, kind of dark and, and um, beautifully rendered and, you know, it's kind of a mixture. It's, it seems like a great point to jump back to music, which it is, but before mm. we do, um, mm. let me just quickly talk about touring um, because that's always been a big part of what you do and I know it's something that right. you enjoy most of the time because you most of the time have a bunch of friends again that you take on the road. You've sort of messed, you've messed around, changed around yeah. with uh, the idea of, who you've toured with more in recent years, but it mm. seems that you're sort of coming back now to some old friends who you've worked with before. Yeah. I mean, I have a, I have a group that's pretty much been, we've been together for about two years and, um, you know, um, it's been a good time. It's been really, um, you know, it's just evolving all the time and, and, uh, we, we do have a good time together. Do you take your, your kid on the road with you? Yeah. Yeah, I do. Um, Cosmo, he, he was, how old is he, he was now? Out a, he's he's uh, a little over two. Right. Um, he was out a lot last year, a little bit less this year, um, but he loves it. He's he constantly was asking about the bus. Where he wants to go on a tour bus or right. airplanes. He actually likes it better than I do. I think. <laughs> Well, I want to thank you for uh, first of all coming in with with the the guys and and recording for us. Yeah, my pleasure. And uh, and it's always a pleasure to, to have a chat with you and just try and get a little bit of an insight into the process because uh, it, it does seem that you put a lot of thought in, into into your records, which mm. you know we, we don't 
finding a lot of artists these days. There are some, yeah. but, but, you know, not as many as perhaps there should be. So I appreciate that. And it's always good to have you in the studios, whether it's uh, at KCRW or here performing for our audience. So thanks. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We're going to go back to our second set of music. It's back on Warner Becomes Eclectic. Cool. Should we introduce these people? Okay, so uh, here on guitar we have Justin yes. Mildel Johnson. Spell it right. Also known as Leatherman. Spell it right. <laughs> who has a misspelling on the new album of his name. And there's a very nice sticker of him in black checking out his watch and grabbing fun. his time. Grabbing yeah. my time. What Something time that rhymes it? with watch. I got um, time. <laughs> Matt Sherrod on Wooden Crate, sushi, sushi Cutting Table, and uh, what is that, a tennis ball attached to a stick? Something like that. Something like that. Uh, it's a Nerf. <laughs> it's a Nerf. <laughs> like a, Nerf. <laughs> a Nerf ball duct taped to a stick. <laughs> and, uh, on, of course, on the Casio, Brian LaBartron. <laughs> Sorry, I get you away from say. the mic. And on uh, Cowbell over here, oh, Ryan. I haven't played yet. <laughs> oh, you haven't played it? Oh, all right. On the Go Go Bell, uh, Ryan Faulkner. Bringing the human error to the, <laughs> Bring that intensely to the digitized the wooden here. crate. Yeah, the Casio very, very world we're creating. Sushi, uh, <laughs> sushi table. table. We're all quiet. And Matt Mahaffey over here on the bongos. Uh, looks like a fork. Yeah. And a... Oh, a knife and a, a, a bowl that looks like it's in yeah. danger of shattering. It's shredding. There's some glass going on. There's glass on the floor. All right. Thoughts. I wanna live for a day in the way that we lost But a water in the rain got Chris not crossed Like a kiss in the car, so we're lazy to walk Does it to rain, we were way wooden plane Waiting for rain in the deck and afraid of what pain might do To the pleasure we knew before we had to move on I did my best for you So they're all smoothed out like rocks are tossed Ducks and rakes over why do we go The sit on the memories drowning below
getting darker We dance along this way I'm a seasick soldier on a ship of laws I got my maps all backwards and my instincts poison The truth blown got a full of wasted years Like blown out speakers in my ears Oh, it's nausea, oh, nausea We're gone Nausea, oh, nausea We're gone I'm a straight line walker with a blackout room Push a shopping cart over in an estate room With my million fingers working for some god Who can see some reflection in a parking lot Oh, it's nausea, oh, nausea We're gone Nausea, oh, nausea We're gone Say 
That you were 